So there you can see a big group. There's probably about 200 elephant seals in that group. And you'll probably notice some of them are lighter blonde and some of them are darker gray. And I'll talk a little bit about that in a second, but we're actually in the molting season right now. So for those of you who have cats or dogs, you know they get fur on your clothes, they shed all the time. Seals are the same, but instead of shedding throughout the year, they come onto the beaches and shed their whole fur coat all at once, it peels off. And that happens in the span of about two weeks. So that is an adult female. She's about six years old. And if you can see on her left side there, she has a number E715. That's E715. So she's a seal that my research team has kept track of ever since she was a pup. So she was born right here at Año Nuevo. She uh, nursed from her mom's milk for about a month. And then her mom abandoned her, went to sea. And this seal, E715, spent a couple weeks on the beach holding her breath, trying to figure out how to do breath hold diving, which is really important for them, and then went off to her first trip to sea. So she swam out, made it past all that low tide beach, and then went out to sea, got past all those big boys who were sleeping in the water, and then went out into the middle of the Northeast Pacific Ocean. She probably did a migration that was around 3,000 miles round trip, and that was to search for fish and squid to eat. So she did that her first year and her second year and her third year, and she's come back every single year for the last six years to Año Nuevo. Right now, you can see she's probably leaving for her foraging migration. So you can see her coat is nice and silver, and she's kind of skinny. So she's probably been on the beach for about a month and she replaced her whole fur coat. So when she got to the beach, she looked more like this blonde, one of these two kind of blonde males that you see here. That's an old fur coat. And then she peeled off that fur coat and totally replaced it with beautiful silver new fur. When she's on the beach, she can't find any food, right? There's no fish, there's no squid to eat here. So she basically relies on the fat stores that she has stored in blubber on her body. So she basically doesn't eat for a whole month while she replaces that fur coat and then she takes off to sea. So she'll probably go into the water right now and then she'll be spending seven months out in the Northeast Pacific Ocean, diving down to about 3000 feet underwater. So if you look up at the ceiling in the room that you're in, you might be in like an eight or 10 foot ceiling. Imagine 3000 feet, that's a 30 story building. That's how deep the seal will dive throughout her whole foraging migration for seven months in order to find enough food. Okay, so there she goes on her great adventure. I'm going to take you guys around to see this little group. We're going to kind of try to keep our distance so we don't disturb them. You see this big male? He just did a big yawn for me. He's probably about five years old. And then this little seal that I'm going to show you is about one year old. And you can see, based on the color of this seal's coat, that it has also finished molting. So we have that nice silvery coat. So you might be wondering why some of the seals have marks on their side. And the long story short is that we like to keep track of individual animals. Some of our research focuses on how individual seals are really different um, and what that means for how successful they are. And so when they're pups, when they're young of the year, about 30 or 40 days old, we give them flipper tags. So hopefully you saw that little bit of green plastic. Those green plastic bits are what we call flipper tags. They're placed in the rear flippers of the seals when the seals are pups, and they stay in for the seals entire lives. And that basically allows us to collect information about individual seals and really get to know them. Like, how old is that seal? Well, if it was born in 2020 and we're now in 2025, that seal would be five years old. For the females, we ask questions like, how many pups have they given birth to? Or um, when do they come to the beach? Is it early in the season or late in the season? How consistent are they in where they swim at sea or how deep they dive? And so those flipper tags help us because we can, in our database, collect information every single day we see the seal for the seal's entire life. But you probably noticed the flipper tags are pretty small. So my team and I read those flipper tags. And once they read the numbers, they basically stamp 
that number on the side of the seal's fur using hair dye. So we take, you know, $6 hair dye from like CVS or Rite Aid or the grocery store. And then we draw it on a little wooden stamper and we carefully stamp the seals when they're asleep. And that allows us to see much bigger numbers on the side of the seals and keep track of individual seals much easier. The problem, of course, as you might have guessed, is that they shed their fur every single year. And that means every single year we have to add a new dye mark to the sides of the seals. So this group that I'm showing you guys is a lot of what we call subadult males. So a lot of five-year-olds, six-year-olds, seven-year-olds. When they get to be about 10 years old, they start to become alpha males. And during the breeding season, they can actually hold harems, which are basically groups of females that they can mate with. So there's this whole cycle where the seals come to the beach for the molt, then they leave to go to sea, and then they come back for the breeding season, and then they leave to go to sea again. So they have two migrations per year. One of our really big research questions is where the seals go when they're at sea. Because you can see right now, I can see all the individual seals. I can tell if they're male or female, get a lot of information about when they got here. But what I don't know is where they were during their migrations. I don't know where they were swimming to, how deep they were diving. I don't know anything about how many fish they caught. And so what we do for a subset of the seals is we actually attach really small devices. Imagine your cell phone, but even smaller. And we glue those devices to the seals. The devices don't impact the seals at all. They cause no harm. It doesn't bother the seals at all. And then the seals take those devices out to sea with them. And those devices measure everything from where they are to how deep they're diving to what they're eating. Sometimes we put video cameras on those tags. Sometimes we put accelerometers. So if you guys have heard of like Fitbits or smartwatches where it counts steps every day, that's basically what we have for the seals, except instead of the steps being true steps, it's actually just how many fish they ate per day. So that's sort of the basics of what we're interested in learning about the seals.